So just quickly review where we're at. <coughs> Last time we sort of reintroduced the 2D pressure diffusivity equation. We're leaving in, the way it's written there, leaves in or accounts for possible heterogeneities and anisotropy, but it does have the remaining assumption that this is an aerial view, so we're looking down on the reservoir because we didn't include the effects of gravity. It is possible to do 2D calculations from a side view where you would include the effects of gravity. And if we were to use finite differences to discretize that PDE, or the way we did it was the control volume approach, we, we end up with the same set of equations we had in 1D, with the main difference being the T matrix has a different structure. And the reason it's different is because now you have sort of arbitrary boundaries, right? Arbitrary in the sense that your 2D domain could be 100 by 3, it could be 30 by 72, right? There's an infinite number of possibilities of how you can build that 2D rectangle. And the structure of that matrix uh, comes into play in the T, and we'll see more of that today. T is a, is a pentadiagonal matrix as opposed to a tridiagonal matrix in 1D. So in order to do these, deal with these 2D systems, we introduce uh, some new index notation. So we remaining, uh, we're borrowing from 1D case where we used I as a X direction index. We introduce a new index J, which is, goes in the Y direction. And then additionally, we have this index L, which is just the grid block number, okay? And with I, J, and NX, then we can uh, define this relationship between the two. And the reason we sort of have the two notations is because when we assemble the matrices and the vectors, the T and the P and the vectors, it's easier to use L because L is the total, you know, it carries the number of the grid or the total number of grid blocks, and that's the size of the T matrix, the number of grid blocks by the number of grid blocks. However, when we're computing the individual entries of the matrix for the transmissibilities, uh, it's convenient to use the IJ not notation because in, in that context, what you'll see is that uh, the interblock transmissibility is no different than it was in uh, 1D. All you need are essentially the two arguments. You know, in 1D, you just had I and I plus one. So you know, here you would have IJ and I, J plus one, uh, I'm sorry, you'd have I, J and I plus one, J. And so you just sort of need the, those two arguments to be able to compute um, the interblock transmissibilities. And so we, for an arbitrary block I, J, we use a control volume approach to write down all the fluxes using our new indices that we defined and we, uh, wrote them down both ways in terms of the I and J and using the I and J for the transmissibility, but also using L for uh, the pressures. And then the accumulation is just what it was before, we're just now using the new index L. And you write down the total mass balance and you get this equation. And you should see that if we, if there was no J direction, then these guys would be zero and you'd get back the one-dimensional mass balance equation. So it's just a small extension from the 1D case. Uh, 